Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Science in My Lecture Series. I am so excited to be here with you this morning. Uh, this topic, this chapter we are looking at this morning, the, the practical summary, if you will, of spiritual mind healing, spiritual mind treatment is so rich and so full that, that I, I'm bubbling over. Uh, so first and foremost, I just had to get that out because it was coming out of me. And I, I wanted to let you know that today is going to be extremely exciting and extremely special as we dig into this whole idea of uh, the essence of what I call religious science or science of mind and healing. Now, First and foremost, let's just go in with the invocation to set the stage and begin to open up to the vibrations of the divine. And so right here, right now, as we begin to allow ourselves to be conduits, to be vessels, to be containers of the living spirit of God. As we allow and know that the essence of who we are is the all of what God is and that Right here, right now, as we explore the avenue, the, the arrangement, the area of life that allows us to be vessels of spirit, to be conduits of healing, and to be embodiment of uplifting, we do so knowing that right now is all we have, and so we take full advantage of it. And so I set the stage, I let this go, and know that it is so. And so it is. Amen. Amen. And amen. And so, as I said, today is we're kind of like uh, from the Science of Mind textbook. We're on chapter 19 and it is a summary of what has gone before, if you will. And so before I step into that, let, let's just do a reprieve on on what Reverend Robert covered last week, who stood in for me because I overbooked myself and I want to thank him so much for that. But last week we we went into this whole idea of the law of attraction. And at its essence that means like attracts like. There is a there is a positive and negative energy force that attracts and repels things like itself. And so if you can remember when you were a child and 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 uh, you played with magnets and it was always a, um, a fascinating thing that depending on the charge, if you will, of the magnet, if you put them together, they would reject each other. You could feel that little force. You could feel that little energy push between them. And then if you let them go, they would flip around and boom, join together creating that complete pole. Well, that is really the essence of life. We are each charged. We are each uh, one pole, one thing that has a, a ebb and flow in it. And the law of attraction operates within the movement of that. We always hear this idea about the movement of spirit. And so that's what we're, we're talking about in terms of one of the laws, the law of attraction. There's also correspondence and, 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 and balance and, and all these different laws uh, that work. But we have to put them in context. I, I had a conversation with my wife last night that basically said, uh, you know, we can look at this understanding of God and what it is and how it works by examining our body. And in those of you who have heard me or know how I approach life, it is definitely through nature. And so the body is one complete system that has many systems within it. And there is a law of attraction, if you will, or a law of correspondence that makes them work in harmony. There's give and take, there's ebb and flow between the respiratory system and the limbic system and in the brain and, and the, and the uh, circulatory system of the heart and the elimination system of the lungs and the kidney. And, and, and these things work together, giving ebb and flow to create one container, one unity, oneness that acts forth in life. And so from that standpoint, we wanna step into this chapter 19 
uh, and, and look at the whole essence of this prayer, healing, uh, treatment, basically becoming a true vessel of the divine. And, and, and I, would, I would encourage everyone, if you haven't read this chapter in a while or, or you know, it was one that you missed over or whatever it may have, go and read it next week. I would say it, it's about 12 pages. I would say, you know, if you can, try to read that thing every day next week. It is that powerful. There's so much there. But at its beginning, it says, the one objective in mind as we've gone through everything we've come up to now is to uncover the idea that man's nature and his relationship to God and the universe is all there is. It is the essence of who and what we are and why we're here. And then it goes on to say that that prayer or, or, or treatment is the door and the key to understand and activate the true nature of who we are. The true nature of who we are. And so when we take that in, when we look at that and, and begin to examine it, and look at the, the, the framework from which we work in, the whole framework of spirituality and understanding God and, and, and how all that fits to create life. The first thing I think we, we must uh, come to grips with is that spiritual, spirituality is natural goodness. Spirituality, this, this ability of, of, of of looking at the spirit of God, the spirit of everything, there is a natural goodness. There is a creative force. There is a life giving essence of spirituality, right? And, 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 and obviously at the root of spirituality is spirit. And we'll get more into that a little later, but, but the first thing I think we, we, begin to surround ourselves with is this idea that spirituality is a natural goodness. And then we move from there into something that sometimes get a little controversial. Uh, however, we want to uh, rectify that, clean that up in that God is not a person, right? God is a presence personified in us. Now, sometimes that's where we get mixed up because that presence is in individual humanity. We begin to, in our uh, association, begin to associate God as a person or in this personal form, if you will. The challenge with that is this, is that when we do that, we begin to set limitations on God, whether it's knowingly or unknowingly, because we understand and know the limits of the physical material man. But here, and all throughout the science of mind textbooks and at the essence of religious science, we're not dealing with material. We're dealing with spiritual. We're dealing with the spiritualness of life, which is the essence, excuse me, of life. And that is where all work takes place. It all takes place right there. So spirituality is not a thing. It is the atmosphere of God, the presence, the goodness, the truth, the beauty, the power of the thing itself. Now, I know that's a lot. And, and, and uh, I would encourage you, you know, after we go through this, to go and listen to this segment again, because it, it, it's a lot that we're going to try to get through here. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to just, you know, try to go with it. And, uh, and we're going to engage it. So, I, you know, first of all, I want to stop right there and see if there's anybody with any, any, any questions, any comments before we go headlong into this topic. And I'm going to just check the, uh, the, the, the status here. And it looks like we're all good and ready to go. And so fasten your seatbelt. So now that we know who and what we are, and that we live in the spiritual world and, 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 and we have these connections with the divine, the consciousness of the universe. The first thing we have to do to be effective in prayer, to be effective in life, is to let all that go. 
Now, I know I just asked for some hard work right there <laughs> to let all this idea about God is is uh, is is not a person. And but God is an atmosphere. God is a presence, a goodness, a truth, a beauty that we are are supposed to recognize and realize and immerse ourselves in. And now I'm telling you to let that go. But I am telling you that because the model of how that works is to imagine in your mind a fish in the ocean or in a lake or in a wherever. When that fish is in the lake, the spirit of the water, the water itself is in, through, and around that fish. And that fish, as it moves in that element, it is not conscious, so to speak, of the separation between it, because there is none in actuality. It is part of the water and the part and the water is part of it all through its gills everywhere. That same analogy applies to us when we look at the relationship of who and what we are to God and how we begin to think about treatment in terms of movement in space, movement in consciousness. Now, a spiritual mind treatment must not be confused with mental concentration. We're not, we're not trying to uh, hold ideas and whoosh and think and any of that. That's not what a spiritual mind treatment is. A treatment is an active thing. It is, a, it is a movement in space. It is a movement in consciousness. And when we begin to understand that, 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 that at, the, at, at the heart of a treatment, at the heart of a prayer, is this feeling of being as a fish might feel being in the water. That, that I'm in this space to where no matter what I do, the effects of that movement, that thought ripples out throughout the water. It ripples out through the space and begins to have and begins to affect everything within itself everything within itself. So so uh, a treatment is an active thing. If we're going to treat, if we're going to pray by a technique, by a method of procedure, if we're going to treat by a mental process, then we have to, uh, we're reducing it to a mental science and, and, and there's a method and technique for what that looks like. There is a certain mental uh, attention we should have in giving a treatment. I'll say that again. There's a, there is a special mental attitude that we must have when we give a treatment. And that means we have to be open. We have to be uh vulnerable, if you will, because when we're not vulnerable, that means we have restrictions. And when we have restrictions at some level, we have began to put limitations on God, on anything, really. I mean, that's, that, that is the definite of restriction is to, to, to reduce the fullness of something, to reduce the fullness of something. But, but let's be clear, there is a difference from the popular idea of mental concentration as thought, we must hold the mind to one thought for a certain period of time. And, and, and if you look in, in the textbooks on page 308 and, 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 and in, in uh, paragraph two, you, you'll get a better understanding of, of, of what I'm trying to summarize here. So, so the first thing we have to realize and activate is we live and move and have our being in the divine. And we've heard that before. And so, so to get a mental picture of that, just think of us as a fish swimming in an ocean. That we can't separate ourselves from God and God most definitely is always in, through, and around us. So if we start with that simple preposition, then we can move forward to this idea that the nature of God, of, of humanity itself, is a perfect and harmonious thing because there's no separation from who and what we are and who and what God is. So we know God is perfect 
at his essence. Therefore, we are perfect and in harmonious wholeness with God as we begin to increase our knowledge and increase our understanding and increase our vibratory uh, uh, receptivity to the power and presence of God. Now, as we do that, um, um, we realize that 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 a treatment being a moving thing and a series of thoughts or statement followed by a realization. This is the way we we begin to uh, understand and and I'll say measure. I don't like measure because now we start sometimes moving into this idea of competition. If I got to measure something, but but. But demonstration to see demonstration so that we know who and what God is and 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 how we interact with it through this medium called prayer. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. And 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 so you know, oftentimes I I get the question, um, you know, well, you know, what is this prayer thing? And and you know, it's all you can't see it, and you know so forth and so on. The, the premise of it is not that we are creating something out of nothing. We are calling forth a law. We are calling forth a, 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 a presence that is not nothing. It's just unseen. And we know because something is not seen doesn't mean that it does not exist. I mean, just take, for example, wind. I mean, no one, to my knowledge, has ever seen wind. No one has ever seen electricity. We have seen the results of wind. We have seen the results of electricity. But the thing itself, we've never seen in a visual form. And again, that same idea is how we are in relationship to the divine and how we operate within this prayer medium um, to make things happen, to enhance our lives, to, to empower ourselves and others through this medium called prayer or treatment. And so now that we understand that a little bit more, we move now a little bit deeper into what a prayer or treatment is. And then we can say this, a treatment happens or a treatment is present, if you will, or prayer is present when it seeks to align ourselves with the presence and power, which is God, and allow our mental conditions not to be uh, hampers or limitations, but to be open and understand that the word of God which is the spirit of God, which is the consciousness of God, is what we're relying on, is what we're calling upon. And we know that to be true now. Also, affectionately, if you will, you know, we know in the very beginning of the book, Ernest Holmes says, I look forward to the day that religion, spirituality, and technology and physics begin to work hand in hand. And so we know from physics that that uh, has this has revealed this 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 metaphysical abstraction that says everything in the universe is because of is made of is actually energy and intelligence, and so everything begins with energy and intelligence, and so. When we when we can open up to that, whoo, now we have the basis of not only a healing treatment, but a healing and effective life. Because we're always in thought, we're always setting forth energy. So in essence, we're always in prayer. We're always in prayer. And so when we begin to correct our thinking and to align ourselves with right ideas and and the and the idea that we are perfected in the spirit of God, then we can allow that spirit to take over the mental, material piece 
of God, us, <laughs> and move with ease and grace. And move with ease and grace. Now, I'm gonna stop there and see if there's anything because I know I'm I'm I know I'm dumping a lot here. I got so I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna stop and see if there's any any questions, uh, any 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 comments, um, because we want to really understand this. And then once we have an understanding, we want to activate it in our lives. We want to actually begin to, as they say, pray seasonally. We want to be in prayer all the time, and that means we want to always be in right thought of our relationship to God, we always want to know that we are not trying to force anything. We're not trying to make something happen. We're trying to allow something to happen through the natural forces of the universe and allow the laws to work. We're not dealing with mental suggestion, but with spiritual principle. We do not seek to force an issue or, or, or to, to make it happen, but rather permit the creative energy, the creative force of the universe to take fold, to take fold. And so in that respect, to understand how this works, we understand that the universe is made of one ultimate stuff. As we continue to, to, to evolve in, in our understanding and nature of the universe, we see from the scientific perspective, from the philosophical perspective, from the psychological perspective, there is ultimately one stuff that appears and takes form in many different ways. Now, now, now no one knows exactly how that happens. Again, it's like the wind. We, don't, we, we, we haven't seen the wind, but we've definitely seen the effects of wind. And that relationship is the same right now with us each and every day, each person, we begin to, to, to have that experience and become more trusting in it and more uh, alive to actually give it a practice. Because in the very beginning, that, that primordial unity of energy and intelligence was all there was. In Emerson, Emerson says this, I, I like this. Emerson says, uh, he had in mind when he said this, I, I, I want to get it right. Um, I don't, I do not say that mind is one thing and matter another. I say they are the same thing. Now that was Emerson. That was before we, we got into a lot of the, uh, science and, and physics and metaphysics at the way it is now being closely tied back to physics, which is where it started. It all started with the metaphysics, trying to uh, ascertain or trying to understand these unseen forces that we saw the results of, but because we lived in this material world of Newtonian physics and a clockwork orange, we had to get a model that expanded. And, and that's what this is. That's what life is. And so that's what we seek to, to embody when we begin to take on this study, when we begin to live our lives as religious scientists and to understand the science of mind and, and how it works. Because here is what, here is what the Bible says. In, in John, in 1 John, first through the third chapter, it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. And then it goes on to say, and all things that were made by the word and without the word, there was nothing that was made. Now that's, that's key because it's saying, in essence, God is a word. God is an idea. God is a concept that has intelligence, that, that has a power, a presence, and everything that was created from that essence. And there is nothing that was created that was not created from that. And so we know that the word is, is, a, is a synonym, right? A synonym for, for God, the divine spirit, intelligence. 
that allows it to, to take on different forms. And we know from, from our studies that a synonym is just another word used to describe the different aspects of a thing or to, to get at a unseen nature of a thing. So when we say word, let's not get too caught up on what we're talking about. Because when we say word, spirit, God, consciousness, intelligence, we're talking about the thing itself, which is how I love the way Ernest defines things as the thing itself. <laughs> because we can't define it categorically. We we can look at the attributes and the, and the uh, presentation of how it makes itself known, but that is a, that is not the thing itself. But we know we have to live in this, in, in the world of, 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 of words, uh, so that we can begin to traverse this, this mountain to get to the top, to see the glory of God and to understand the fullness, the wholeness and the oneness of who and what we are and what life is. And so, as we continue, it, you know, God says this. God says there is one substance, and all form comes from that one substance and is made manifest through a vibration, through a vibration. And and as we look at this, we know that that uh, that is so because all the evidence that we've had does not contradict that. So we live in the spiritual universe governed by mental laws, and and that. Through this action of correspondence and attraction and 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 all of the other laws, they move upon this substance and produce form in a cyclic manner. In a cyclic manner. And so the form changes, but the spirit, the word, the essence of God is changeless. It's never changed and it's formless. So it never runs out of ways to present itself. And when we can get there, we are moving in, in, a, in a way. We're moving in an essence that is perfect. That is perfect. So we begin to think when we say treatments and, 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 and looking at the magnitude of what we're treating for, there is no great or small in the sight of God. There's only the movement of the energy. There's only the movement of the spirit of God that allows a thing to be as God said in the beginning, be, and it is. So there's an intelligence there that we must tap into, that we must uh, allow to become one within ourselves consciously. It's already one. We're already one with the essence of God, but our consciousness has to receive that. Our consciousness has to receive that. Now, Ernest Holmes uh, on 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 page seventeen, beginning on the first paragraph, there he he uh, he talks about this this technique uh, or this uh, method of uh, uh, of how we go about uh, thinking and and performing and and Playing doing these desktop, things. Uh, so what we do is this. He says that he starts with the promise that God is perfect, the premise rather, that God is perfect, that the, that the spiritual system is perfect and that man is a part of that spiritual system. Therefore we are perfect at a spiritual level. So when we begin to pray, the practitioner does not deal with material man or material woman. We deal with spiritual man, spiritual woman, because that is who we really are. As they, as they say, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so when we deal with things that we want to transcend or, 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 or transform or transcend, transcend rather, we begin to uh, distinguish between spiritual man and physical man. And that allows us to, to open up. And so when we begin to know that we are spiritual beings and they were operating on a spiritual plane, the first thing that we need to do is we have to believe. 
We have to do the work. We have to understand. We have to believe. And then we have to have faith of God, not faith in God. I'll say that again. Faith of God and not faith in God. Because we have something that is immense and enormous. We need to have faith of it. Because in it means I have a conception of what it is. And I've already, by definition, began to limit the power of God. And so we have faith in it as much as we know, as much as we can conceive. And then we begin to evolve and, and expand our container. And that understanding and that faith becomes greater and greater based on our experience and demonstration that we have with God. And so we're getting real close to the end. And, and, and I mean, this, you have to go and read this. I would, I would suggest everybody read this chapter next week, starting today, right? Well, tomorrow chat week begins on Sunday every day next week to get to really get an essence of this chapter because it is something special. And so I guess as I try to wrap this up, the things I want to bring forward is this, that when we're treating, the first thing we need to recognize is the statement, the first step of treatment, which is recognition, is the recognition that that there's there is one spirit. We're all involved. And that once we recognize that there is this intelligence, this 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 wisdom, this consciousness, and that we can get to the idea of the unification of it is us and we are it, now we step into the realization. Because when we can feel that presence of God within us, now, as they say, we can speak our word. And we speak our word without the concept of limitations. Because we don't, we, we don't, God has no limits. God has no limits. And so we allow that to be. And so when we do that, we have a knowingness in truth that there is no lack of limitation of what we are asking for and who and what we are asking from. And then we allow the law of mind to operate as it always does in balance and begin to create a feeling and an essence that will make the invisible into the visible. And so I'll stop right there. Uh, and I'll open up to see if there are any questions uh, and, and uh, we'll allow those questions to come across the screen and, and, and see what they are. And then we will move forward from there. So Roy says, if God is like the wind and we are part of God, a child of God, does that mean we would be like the wind when we die? The answer is absolutely yes. From my perspective, my study, yes. Then he goes on, he says, why is it then there is a lot in the Bible about the lake of fire for sinners? Now, that's a good question. And that opens up a, a, a little metaphysical lesson right there, because what that says, you know, the, the, the lake of fire, we have to remember that some of these ancient texts were written both in basic and plain fundamental wording. And then there was stuff that was allegorical and metaphorical and metaphysics. And so my understanding and training says that this fire is not a physical fire because we just stated that we are spiritual beings. And that what that translates into is that that is a manner of transformation. That is a manner of, of indicating and forget and forget the center piece. Again, if we go back to the definition of center, a center only means from the original root to forget, to not remember something. To sin was to, re, to not remember something. And so if we look at it in that context, a lot of people have forgotten who we are, that we are spiritual. And so when, when, when they talk about this fire, if you will, i.e. this transformational, transformational agent, that's all fire is. It transfers things from one thing to another. There's no inherent goodness or badness in it. It has a nature that that's what it does. And so when we can tap into that and understand that and begin to, to traverse life in that manner, we understand that statement I think properly translated means that as we begin to transform our ideas from the idea of being physical beings into being spiritual beings, 
then we understand that the wind is just another transformation of energy. And that's what we are. And that's what we do in life. We transform from one stage to another. We transform from an idea in mother and father's mind to an embryo, to a fetus, to a newborn, to a, to a, to a, 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 a senior, and, and on to an ancestor. So that's how I would answer that. Um, because we, 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 we have to begin to earnestly begin to study and, and articulate and view the world from this spiritual, unseen, conscious, intelligence point of view, and then begin to build it just as it's described in ancient texts. And, and the beauty of this and the confirmation in my mind of this is that um, no matter what tradition you go to, now there may be different ways of explaining the divine and how it came about to manifest itself. But one thing I think is, 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 is key in all of them is that there is a power, a presence, and an intelligence, no matter whether it showed up in the physical form, the form of an animal, excuse me, or just an invisible force, that there is this creative understanding about it that allows it to make things happen. And so I'm going to stop there and see if there's any more uh, comments or questions or, or anything because again, what we're looking at here is how to begin to take these concepts, ideas, understanding of the laws and put them into conscious practice and then begin to understand and document, if you will, the results. So we begin to know how to adjust our spiritual frequency so that we become true creators, co-creators with the divine, and our word becomes our bond and our word becomes power. So are there any other comments or questions that anyone wants to uh, bring forth? There is no spot where God is not. I am that. I am just like you. Well, that's perfect. Because that's exactly what it is. I mean, just for a minute, imagine that in the beginning there was this invisible stuff, this goo, this soup, right? And that's all there is. And that soup is intelligent and 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 it has the ability to expand itself. And if we can do that, and then we expand that out to what we have today, a physical universe that we can see and touch and feel and experience at, at a different level, then there is no way possible for the essence of that original thing, the thing itself, the consciousness, the intelligence, the energy that moves and, and forms things can be absent from anything on the planet, anything in the cosmos. And so I am that I am and, and God and I and you are all one. And therefore, that is how treatment, prayer works, because it's all one thing. And when I can align myself with that knowledge and understanding, I begin just like the fish. When the fish swims, it sends ripples throughout the ocean. And the same thing happens with prayer. When we pray, we begin to send ripples throughout the universe that will allow these laws of attraction and laws of correspondence to find their proper place in relationship to that prayer that is done without limitation, that is done from a spiritual perspective and cause things to manifest, to be demonstrated. And that's what we're looking for. Whether we're trying to increase our health, increase our prosperity, to find a job, a mate, regardless of what it is, there's a spiritual idea of who and what that thing is. And when we can align ourselves with it, and speak it forth clearly, specifically, and allow the spirit, the law, to do its thing, then we can step back and, and stay in, in, in alignment with that and watch it unfold. And watch it unfold. So uh, 
I see one that says, so if God is eternal, we are too. Does that mean we live before we were born? Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe that is an absolute statement because if the essence of us is spirit, you know, that, and, and again, we, we, we use all the tools we have. There is a scientific statement that says, uh, and there's a little variance because there's an ebb and flow, but they said at about 40 days, give or take, of a fetus progression, that is when it becomes a living soul, meaning that is when it starts having uh, some cognition and some uh, 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 movement around that idea because we know that everything comes from a word, a thought, invisible, unseen. And then that thought moves into manifestation. So we are eternal beings. And 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 from that point of you know, in 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 most traditions it says we are never born and we never die. We are eternal. We are like energy, right? We take on different forms. So when one form of the energy dissipates, and we start you know, and if we go into you know these laws of thermodynamics and entropy and and all these things of how energy ebbs and flows. When it does that, it just reforms into something else. You know, it reminds me of this whole idea about um, chaos. You know, most people say that chaos is this crazy, unformed thing that is just out of control. But another way of looking at that is chaos is just a new order that is on the process of emerging that we have not seen the full manifestation of it yet. And so, that's the same thing that happens, I believe, when we look at our lives and we look at prayer and, and in the statement uh, that, that we're spiritual beings that's continually expanding and embodying the idea of the thing itself. And so we operate from that space and we make it so. Okay, another question says, does New Thought believe in the resurrection where the physical body and the spirit unites. Now that's a good question. That's and that, and that that's a, that's a whole another lecture. But let me do this in honest. If we are spiritual beings and we take it from that context, the resurrection of the spirit is the reforming of the spirit. Right? It is it is it's it's a one way of looking at it might be is to take clay. I can take clay and make it into a vase. I can squash it all back down and then reform it into a cup or reform it into a bowl. So that thing itself, the original substance of that clay pot can be reconstituted, can be resurrected into something else. And that's what we're living with. So, you know, one thing I, I was on Laura Tupper's, Topper's show, rather, the Cosmic Prayer uh, this past week, and we had a great conversation on prayer and 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 uh hopefully we can get it in the uh in in the feed there so you can grab it or in the in the uh description of the program it's a great program i think and 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 it adds more to this and it's practical application for you to go out and listen to and uh begin to uh, understand yes and principle is not bound by precedence right we we see that every day. We see where where we had one. You you just take a cell phone. You know we had the idea that to make a phone call in the very beginning we needed these wires to send the signal, the energy, right across lines that we had to run. Well now we know through microwave and through satellites we don't need that. We can send it through the air. <laughs> on another form of energy constitution. Again, a form of resurrection almost, that we can send this stuff around and send it to the person, place, or thing that we're trying to contact on that cell phone or through you know, a text message or through uh, looking for something on the internet. So, I mean, we really live in an amazing world. And I think this chapter 19 sets the stage that if we can really dig deep into it and we can really 
begin to align ourselves with the idea and embody it, that we become a power and a force for good in the world. And we understand that in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. And that means the power and presence of God is recognized, utilized, and we understand that life is prime. And that whatever we're doing, if we're supporting life, if we're promoting life, if we're protecting life, if we're encouraging life, because within that, there's this harmonious movement that's always taking place in the recognition of everything, we will get better and better and better. And so it is. So uh looks like our time is, is winding down. Uh, and uh, so... I would say next week, join us, you know, next week we're going to have uh, Reverend Michelle Wadley and she's going to be doing what the mystics have taught. And that should be in line with what we've gone through today. That should be fascinating because she is going to be looking at this idea of all these concepts of how they tapped into this invisible stuff and began to make statements thousands of years ago that are currently being proven by science, if you will. Not that science is the end all to be all, but, but it's something that we respect and know that it is. And these statements, these understanding, these ways of living and being are being supported. And why? Because there's a oneness in the universe. There is no separation. It's just a different form. It's a different expression of the one thing itself, energy, consciousness, and intelligence. And so, that's where we'll leave it. I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll give thanks to all those who are here. I ask you, please continue to donate the, the, the network. We are here to create practical life experience so that we can tap into the thing itself. And so your donations help us continue to do that. They help us outline programs and, and special events that allow us to realize ourselves as spiritual beings first and material being second, and that we operate in the face of spirit. And so right now, just do a, 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 a small closing treatment on that idea. And so as I realize right here, right now, that, that the only thing that ever did exist, regardless of, of the manifestations that we see around us, is God, the spirit, the intelligence of life of material, of understanding, of ideas. It's all coming from that one unitary source that goes by many names and is expressed in many different ways. But I like it best when we when we begin to open up to the idea, the thing itself, which puts no limits on it, which, which allows it to be free and to be objective and to be subjective when it needs to be and to allow it to move from this constant state of, of evolving to this objective state of present demonstration. And we see that all around us. And so as we tap into that and understand that we are from that, we are that, then we can begin to live our lives as, as true magicians, as they sometimes say. Someone who's able to understand the power of the unseen and, and to call forth these things through law that are immutable, and are founded on practical application. And so as we understand that and unify with that, we have a realization that there is no place that God is not and there is nothing that God cannot do. And so we say yes to life. We give thanks to it. We allow it to be and know that it is so. And so it is. Amen, amen, and amen. Just everyone have a great rest of the weekend. Enjoy life. Read chapter 19, if you can, every day next week. And I and I guarantee, I, I'd like to see some comments next week just as a, a, a hit to say, hey, I'll send it to the station that says I did that and it changed my perspective because I believe it will. So have a great day. Peace and blessings. Love you lots. And so it is. Amen.